Okay, so let's check this out now. Sorry, it's been a couple weeks since we've done this, and it was a new system when we started. So, we're gonna see if we got sound yet. Yes, we have sound, great. I can hear it on my cell phone. So we have video, we have sound. Again, welcome to Mill City Christian Church. Uh, thank you for joining in. My name is Pastor Paul Luna. If you're just signing in, let us know where you're at. Uh, uh, go ahead and write your name. We're, we're excited to, to see so many of you guys uh, online with us today. So I'm happy to see you guys here in person. I didn't know if anybody was going to show up this morning. And so um, that's it. Let's go ahead and open up with announcements. First of all, it is good to see all of you. Nice, as I, I said this earlier, uh, Melissa and Elsa and Dana and Mark and Lacey. Um, I saw a few other people on here. Uh, Joe and Amanda and Ray. It's good to see all of you guys and... Uh, we're glad that you're able to join with us. And if you're on uh, YouTube, I'm afraid I can't go on there and go look right now. But I bet you Lacey's on YouTube because she likes Lace on YouTube. So it's good to see you guys this morning. Let's go ahead and talk about announcements real quick. Uh, the first thing is, if you guys are uh, have a connection card, if you could guys go ahead and grab a connection card, we are still praying. Um, and so if you would like, go ahead and grab a connection card, write down people we could pray for, things that we could pray for in our community. I know we're going to be praying about the fire. You could also go to our disaster relief page if you'd like to pray yourself. If you go to millcitycc.com forward slash disaster, then they'll take you to a, a, there's a section on there and it gives you things that we could pray for for our community as we continue to rebuild, as we continue to rebuild the gates as well. So the next thing up here, I think is just on prayer. Um, We'll let you know about prayer, exactly what's going on with prayer, but we will be at least praying online on Tuesday. So you could join us at 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning online. Uh, we'll let you know about the 1 o'clock and about Thursday. Or, or Actually, you're here. Are we praying on Thursday? Okay, so Thursday we will be praying here at 6 p.m. I don't know about 1 o'clock on Tuesday. We may or may not be able to do that right now. So we will let you know. We'll send out messages Next thing, uh, as far as the bulletin, if you'd like to go ahead, we don't have a physical bulletin, so if you'd like to go ahead and look at a digital bulletin, you could go ahead and do so. Go to millcitycc.com forward slash live, and there you can go ahead and, and uh, pull out the digital bulletin and, and look at that because we don't have a paper one for today. You could also give online as well. And so you give, uh, obviously, today in the, in the basket in the back, or you can go ahead and give online. And then finally, as far as children's activities go, we don't have any children's activities prepared for this weekend. So there's no, uh, nothing online for that. We will start that up again for next week. And I think that um, almost covers it. Just a couple things. We, you could pray for us. We're going to be meeting and talking uh, as elders about what we're going to do is we're moving forward. We actually have our basement full of supplies right now and uh, to help out our community. And so we're going to be figuring out our system for that. So if you would like to help out, help our, our Mason, I'm getting a bad echo. Um, if you would like to go in and, and help out with the serving our community, maybe just helping us with our food bank that's downstairs. And we have things like baby products, hygiene products, uh, paper towels, stuff like that. If you'd like to help out with that, let me know. Um, if you have other ways you would like to help out, if you're like, I got a tractor, I, don't, I would love to help out people, you know, just clear out their property as maybe clear out a barn, let, let me know, and we'd be glad to get you involved with that. And that's it for announcement. We are going to go ahead and have a shortened service this morning. Um, because of the, the air being what it is, we decided not to do a ton of singing because you probably would like to keep your lungs um, and it's a little hard to, to breathe with a mask and with bad air. So uh, we will have a little bit of a shorter service, but we will be doing communion. So if you're online, go ahead and grab your communion elements now because we'll be doing that a little bit later. So why don't we go ahead and join together in the singing. Will you stand with us? Oh, yeah. 
31st anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. It was the culmination of years of intense planning, research, and effort, and of centuries of scientific and astronomical study. It ranks as possibly the most impressive human achievement in history. People of a certain age can recall the image of the American flag on the moon's surface and Neil Armstrong's famous one giant leap for mankind statement. But probably very few people know about something else that happened that day on the moon. After the landing, astronaut Buzz Aldrin removed from his personal preference kit a small loaf of bread and a chalice from his church back in Houston, Texas, where he was an elder. Aldrin read the words of Jesus from John 15:15. 15, 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. He then took the elements and prayed. It was the first Lord's Supper in space. Aldrin later said, in the one-sixth gravity of the moon, the wine curls slowly and gracefully up the side of the cup. It was interesting to think that the very first liquid ever poured on the moon and the first food eaten there were communion elements. He remembered feeling especially strongly my unity with our church back home and with the church everywhere. In the middle of a moment synonymous with human achievement, there was an understanding that something even more significant had already occurred, the work of Christ at the cross. Today, when we remember Christ's death and resurrection, we could all use the same spirit of humility as Aldrin. Because while none of us has made it to the moon, many of us are still proud. The words of Christ in John 15 are true for all of us. No matter what we achieve, how much money we make, or how successful we are, the only true measure of our worth is found in what Christ has done. Apart from him, nothing we do will have any lasting value. Only in his grace and forgiveness will we find real life today and eternal life forever. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for these communion elements and what they represent. We thank you for the gift of eternal life. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will be with each person that's able to partake today. And we pray this in your holy name. Amen. Well, good morning. I know it's a little bit quieter in here. You guys are all doing communion. I'm too quick. It is good to see everybody, though. I will say that I, I, even, I um, it has been a long time, and when I see people, it's almost like a celebration. I, I don't know if any of you guys felt this, but when we were uh, evacuated and we were places like Salem and Albany, and we'd run across somebody we knew, it was just excitement. Um, even if I didn't like the person, I was still excited to see them. <laughs> and so it was, it was good to, to see individuals. It was gr even great to be able to see people as we, um, as we prayed online and as we um, just connected uh, and just in different ways. It, it's funny because anywhere I went, I connected with somebody that maybe I, did, I never met them before, but I connected with people that I found that were evacuated. There was just a, a connection I was able to make with them and, and talk to them. Where do you live? You know, how's your home? Stuff like that. And, and I heard stories where people said, hey, my home is great. Uh, we're doing okay. You know, we're just tired of having a family of five in, in a hotel room, but we're okay. And then other heartbreaking stories where people said, we've lost everything. You know, all of our, our home is gone. It just came up. We had no time to pack. We had no time to grab anything. It just came through the North Fork, and, and we just made it out with our, our lives. And, and now we got to figure out what to do. To do next. So there's a lot to pray for for our community. There's, like I said earlier, there's a lot of opportunities for us to serve and for us to, to be a witness uh, from everything from just helping people clean up to praying with them, uh, just making sure that they have the items that they need. So as you become aware of people's needs in our community, 
and you say, well, I don't know what to do. Well, and the church doesn't have enough. Well, no, before you assume that the church does not have enough, the church actually is much larger than our church. We've been able to talk with other churches, many other churches, who said we would like to support what is going on in your community. We want to support people and, and help them rebuild. We have finances, we have supplies, but we just don't know what they need. We need somebody to, to act as in the middle and say we would love to help out. And so that's our desire. Our desire is to help out our community. So if you're aware of a need, then let us know. You may think, oh, we're just a little old church. What can we do? Well, we can't do a lot. God can. And he's pulling the churches together uh, throughout our state that are, have contacted us uh, and said we would like to help. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are the God who knows what is going on. You are aware of all the situations and what everybody is, is facing. I ask you, Lord, just to, to move through this fire, move through the after effects as, as the smoke clears, let it be your light that shines and that the world sees. And that we would turn to you at this time, Lord. That we would seek you out. That we would love you, that we would honor you. And that people would draw near to you, Lord, during this upheaval in our life. I, 2020, we thought it couldn't get any worse than this. And we were shown, no, things can change. But you, you are always constant. And there's going to be more trials in the future, Lord, and yet you will always be constant. Help us to seek you out, Lord. Help us to trust you and be a reflection of you. Be the church body. Be your body here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, today we're talking about after the smoke and uh, after the smoke clears, because I feel like that's what we're dealing with right now. There's a little bit of smoke in our valley. Yesterday it looked really beautiful, and I was like, oh good, it's all gone. I woke up this morning and I saw more smoke, and I went, man, won't it just go away? But that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be talking about a little bit about how do we live our lives after such a traumatic moment? How do we move forward and grow in our faith? Uh, have you ever stood looking into the future and sat there or looked at any moment in time and said, you know what, I don't know how to move forward. I don't know what the decisions to make. As, as I was reading the news, I was listening to people and talking to people who said, you know what, suddenly there was a, there was a fire and I didn't know how much time, so we, we grabbed what we can and then some of us left right away or other people said, well, we had more time and other people, they're just trying to make decisions off of the information they had right then, but there was no clear picture I don't know if anybody had a, a guide in their house that said, okay, this is what happens if a fire were to start near you. This is exactly what you need to do. And we have made plans in our own home. I mean, we knew to grab the wedding album, and we did. But we forgot to grab the birth certificates. You know, we, we've done this before, but we still forgot because in the chaos of, of everything that was going on, we, we weren't exactly uh, sure what to do. But I read a story about a na man named Dan. Now, Dan lived up the North Fork. And he had an interesting story, a very colorful story, but what happened was is, is Dan was living at the North Fork and he was in his home on the night of the fire and, and he became aware of the fire and he looked outside and he saw the fire and the fire was coming up on him, it was right on top of him and, and, and here he is, you may know him personally, and as the fire is coming on up towards him, he decided, you know what, I need to get out. He's like, Dan, you need to get out of here. So he got in his car and he, and he drove off to try to escape the fire. And as he's driving down the North Fork, he's uh, getting closer to the, to the golf course, uh, some trees come down, and they're blocking the road so he can't go around it. And so he's checking out, the, you know, is there any way he could get around or anything he could use over at the golf course? And as he's doing that and trying to investigate how to get, escape this fire, his tires pop. And so he's driving on his rims, and he can't figure out anything how to get around this. So he says, you know what? My tires are popped. I can't get around this tree. I'm going to go back home, and I'm going to grab my truck. So he goes back home to go get his truck, and as he's going home, he sees that his neighbor's house is okay, but his house is burning down, and some trees have fallen over, and he can't get to his truck. So he turns around, and he goes back the other direction, and the fire is catching up to him, and he pulls over, and he says, 
He's realizing the fire's going to come around him. He doesn't want to be in his car. And he says, Dan, you need to get down to the river. So he, he goes and he gets down into the river and he goes underneath the bridge. And he's waiting the fire out, trying to wait it out there. When the, the, on the, each side of the bridge, there's bushes there and they catch on fire. And so he says, Dan, you need to get in the water. So Dan goes and gets in the water. And there's embers coming on down. And he realizes he needs to move on. So he, he floats down the river until the river, uh, he's floating on, as he's floating down the river, he notices on the side there's a, a green lawn chair. There's a couple of green lawn chairs on the side of the road. And so he grabs, or on the side of the river, and so he grabs one of the, the lawn chairs and he uses it as a shield to block all the embers that are coming on down. And as he's looking down, he sees a case of beer there. And he says, well, what's the chances there's beer in there? So he, but he opens it up and there's one beer. And so he grabs the beer, he grabs the lawn chair, gets back in the river and begins to float down the river some more until he comes up to a big rock, a wide area of the river. And there's a big rock and he leans up against the rock and he uses the, the chair to block the embers as he's coming on down. And as the fire begins to pass by him a little bit, he pulls the lawn chair out and he sits down in it. And the question came up, well, did you drink the beer? And his response was, hell yeah, I drank the beer. And he drank the beer and he watched the fire go and the smoke came along. And he, as the fire moved on, now there's, the smoke was settling. And so he learned that he needed to get down into the water, use his, his uh, shirt as a shield. And he found that there's an area, a pocket of air just above the water, but where the smoke would come down and he was able to breathe there. Until finally the next day, he was able to, to, as the fire passed on, was able to go up. His car miraculously was still there, but was unable to take it anywhere. And uh, he saw emergency lights come along, and he picked them up, and he got out of the fire where he was able to meet with family. He survived this, what would have been a very scary moment, very traumatic moment. But there was no clear path of what he should do. He just made decisions. And he did his best to make the best choices in the situation. He realized that if he had kept on driving, there's a good chance he would have actually driven into the firestorm and would have possibly died. But because the road was blocked, he was forced to stay behind. He actually had a better chance doing what he did do. Sometimes there's a clear picture in life some, where to go and what to do. And sometimes there is not. And we faced that couple weeks ago where we had to make choices so what do you tell yourself when things are going crazy in our lives what are what do we tell ourselves satan is going to try to say things and scare you he's going to suggest thoughts into your mind that scare you that aren't necessarily true so what do you tell yourself that is true that can encourage you that can remind you during difficult times but we're going to be looking at Psalm 121. Psalm 121, if you want to go ahead and open up your Bibles to that, go ahead and, and do that right now. It is a famous um, set of passages. It's one of 15 psalms called the Ascension Psalms. And what they, the Ascension Psalms were simply a, a grouping of psalms that were put together that were, cons, were consistently saying to, together, like a, you would sing one. It's like a playlist. So as people were traveling from Jerusalem, or traveling to Jerusalem, they would be singing the songs because they were on a, on a hard journey, traveling from wherever they lived, and, and there could be bandits on the road, it could be hot outside, it could be cold in the evening, and so they had these songs to encourage themselves. And these are psalms that would bring comfort, and that would... Let's tell, remind them that they have a God to turn to for help, even if they were lost. So I know you don't have a, a, a bulletin, but if you'd like to go and write in your Bibles, number one we're going to be looking at is be assured whether, I'm sorry, be assured where your help comes from. Be assured where your help comes from. I'm going to go ahead and look at Psalm 121, verse 1 says, I lift my eyes up to the mountains, where does my help come from? Mountains are beautiful. I love the mountains. This is why we live here, because I love the mountains. I, I, the valley down below, Staten and all those places, is a great place to live. But I enjoy being in the mountains. I love the beauty of them. I love how majestic they are. But as, as beautiful as they are, they don't provide any help. 
I don't know, when we had the fires, did anybody find the mountains move over and try to help you move along? In some ways, they are an obstacle because we had only limited options on where we can go when we were trying to get away from the fire. So the mountains, as beautiful as they are, they are no help. So we need to find our help higher. So we need to look higher than the mountains. Verse 2 goes on to say, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord. On the night of the fire, I prayed a lot. I prayed a whole lot. Now, my question is, is, did the rest of you guys pray? Did anybody else pray? We're not singing yet. That's at the very end. No, no, when I get to the last, you'll, you'll see at the end. Um, sorry. How many of you guys were praying on the, on the night of the fire? Yeah? <laughs> I probably would garter the, the bet that most of you prayed more that night than you normally pray. When the fire came down on Potato Hill, and my friends refer to it as Big Potato Hill now, and uh, when that fire came down, I was praying because here I am with my trailer hooked up. In fact, you can see it right back there. My trailer is hooked up. My wife is driving with the kids in the van, and Mason, who has never driven alone at this point in time, had to drive the Subaru on the night of the fire in the middle of the night, and I was praying, God, just please protect my family. Just please get us out of here. If the trailer and the van break down, that's fine. I'll go with the rest of my family and leave it. But right now, I just want to make sure everything is okay. And so I prayed. I looked to God because I trusted Him. Let's go ahead and back up uh, Ryan to verse 2 real quickly. Look at this. My Help comes from the Lord. Now this word Lord, these uppercase O-R-D here, what that indicates is that this is the uh, Yahweh's name. In fact, let's go and notice the notice slide there. The next two down. There we go. Notice the name Lord. The all caps indicate this translation of Yahweh, which is God's covenant name given to Israel. It indicates that our help comes from God who keeps his promises. So when God would make a promise to the Israelites, he would use his name to remind them that this is a covenant promise. When we need help, God will help us. This is a promise that he gives to all of his believers, for everyone who follows him. Because he is the maker of heaven, the creator, the sustainer of everything. And he guards both you and me. Number two, be assured of God's vigilance. Be assured of God's vigilance. The psalm begins to, to switch here. It goes from first person to now second person, meaning that it's no longer about where does my help come from, but then switches over to using the word your. Excuse me, I have to discipline my own kid, Ashton Luna. You will sit there and be quiet. And everybody on the screen can see you too. It goes from, where does my help come from? To your. Meaning that other people are now singing this song. To remind us that we are not alone. That there is a body of believers that can encourage each other. Let's go ahead and look at verse 3. He will not let your foot slip. He will watch us over you, will not slumber. So God does not slumber. He does not uh, let us fall down. The night of the, the, of the journey of our fire, trying to escape that, it was treacherous for many of us. And yet God would not let anything happen to our souls. Maybe something could happen to us here on earth, but God was watching over. In fact, but the Lord promises that we will not slip away from the Lord, our souls are safe. Regardless of everything that can happen, our souls were still safe. Psalm 121.4 talks about, Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Our God is not aware, unaware of anything that goes on in our lives. He is awake. He is vigilant. He does not fall asleep. 
In fact, the phrase watches over and the word keep, you'll see that used six different times in this section of Scripture, in Psalm 121. In fact, if you want to, you go through your Bibles and you can underline each time it says, watch over or keep. And you'll find six different times that it is used. The word here implies that He is here to protect us. He's here to guard us, to bless us, to take care of us. And He does not slumber. So know that there's a God who cares and that we can trust in Him. Israel learned to trust in Him. We need to learn to trust in Him as well in all circumstances. We have a God who loves us, who is our Father in heaven, and we can trust Him. Number three, be assured of God watching carefully. Be assured of God watching carefully. When the Israelites would travel to Jerusalem, they would travel during the day and the night. And it could be dangerous for them as they would travel. In fact, at some points of times, they were traveling outside in the blistering heat. When it talks about going into the wilderness, it would be hot. In fact, go ahead and pull out the next picture. It would be hot. Oh, did I skip a part? Um, oh, yes, I did. It would be hot. And there may not be any shade in sight. In fact, Psalm 121 verses 5 and 6 says, The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at the right hand. And the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. So as they're traveling during the day, it would be hot and blistering. And in the night, when thieves could come, God was there and he would be protecting them. This brought back the imagery that they would remember about leaving Egypt. When they left Egypt, there would be a cloud that would cover them in the day to protect them from the, the sun rays. And at night, there would be a, a pillar of fire. And so nobody could ever uh, sneak up on them. No one would ever just think we could get away and, and attack them with a surprise attack because they knew God was with them at all times. So nobody would am ambush them. We no longer see the cloud of fire, but God is still there guarding us. So while we may not see a cloud or a pillar of fire, know that there is God who still is guarding us. Number four, be assured of God's, be assured, be assured of God watching carefully. Did I, wait a second, is that number four? Is that what I have on there? Oh, it should be, be assured of God's uh, faithfulness. So be assured of God's faithfulness is what it should be. Psalm 121, verses 7 and 8 says, The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your, your coming and going, both now and forevermore. We are never promised freedom from troubles. If we ever lived and, and ever thought that we could be free of troubles, as long as you're a follower of Christ, that was probably dispelled in your minds a couple of weeks ago. We will still continue to face troubles, but rest assured our souls are safe with Christ. When verse 7, look at it here. When verse 7 says, He will watch over your life, the word could be translated soul. Next. Then, yeah. That's why we love the hymn that says, Whether, Whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Our soul is safe. So when it talks about your life here, it is talking about our soul as well. It is safe with him. So we can have a lot of troubles in our life. And yet know that God is faithful and he will protect us. And he will Guard our souls. What, what is it? If, if we gained everything in the whole world and lost our souls, it is all worthless to us. I think for most people, the fire was scary. I don't care who you were. You could be a big, burly guy. And the fire was still scary. It was for me. But even in that situation, I knew I was not alone. I knew that I was protected. That there was a God who cared for me. In fact, I love the scripture that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And the, let's go back to verse 7 real quick. 
or verse 8. Go to the next one over. Oh, it's, no, no, it's, it's, it's sorry, the verses. Poor Ryan, he's making him jump all around. Okay. Now and forevermore. The verse ends on now and forevermore. That God is going to be with us today, tomorrow, and the day after. He's always with us. Let me go and look at the entire psalm now. We're going to look at the entire psalm, and I'm going to read it to all of us. So the whole thing, Psalm 121. Now, here we go. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at the right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever more. Perhaps you could write in the margin of your Bible, God's promise for my hard journeys. This psalm has also been put into a, a, a song that we sing, a modern song. It actually came out in the 90s. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sing it today. So if you'd like to join us in song, we're going to go ahead and sing the psalms together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we don't look to the mountains, we don't look to the oceans, we don't look to our government, we don't look anywhere else for our help. We look to you, Lord, and to you alone. Lord, I just ask you just to, just to strengthen us. Let us find our courage in you, that you will not forsake us, you will not leave us, that you are vigilant 
and that we can be assured that you are watching out for us. In the same way that Israel learned to trust you, Lord, let us also put our trust in you too, Lord. Thank you that we get to come here to our community and we get to serve our community, that you're giving us the opportunity to show your love. Let us, our hearts break though for those who have lost so much. Let us care for them in the same way you would care for them. Putting aside our own priorities, putting aside our own wants so that we may meet the needs of others. Let us be consistently thinking about our friends in, in the weeks to come who have lost so much. Right now, it's, it's easy to think about those who have lost, but in a month, they're still going to need encouragement. In six months, they're still going to need encouragement. Even in a year, this is still going to be affecting them. Let us remember them, encourage them, and let them know that we love them and that you love them. We love you, Lord. We turn to you in our time of need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that concludes our service this morning. We will be getting back to regular schedule, I guess you could say, next week.